what are the things that I should be thinking about and doing this year to lay the groundwork to develop best practices and to make sure that if it's two or three years before we get a new law, that we make it work as well as possible. And uh, uh, Missouri is my 11th state to visit in the last you know, six weeks or so. And uh, I'm encouraged by a lot of the consensus around the issues that we're hearing that need to be addressed. And I want to interact with you about uh, what some of those are. So that's, that's why I'm here. Um, you know, I, 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 told, uh, I told Kent, I, I think uh, the, the way I capture where we are in education is to say that we're pleased but not satisfied. We've worked hard. We've made good progress. We're, the trend lines are going in the right direction. We are seeing the achievement gap close around the country. That's true here. Uh, you know, we are we are focused, I think, more intently on the needs of every child than we ever have been, in, at least in the 25 years or so that I've been in this business. And you know, the conversation that we're having today is different from that which we had, you know, six or eight years ago. It is not about whether or not we should, you know, leave children behind or whatever. It's now about kind of how are we going to do it. You know, what are the ways, what are the best practices, what are the proper assessments, and so on. And uh, so I think it's a, it's a very different conversation than we, we might have been having, you know, six or eight years ago. Um, you all have led on some very key and important things, and uh, I know there are also issues that you're, you're still working on, maybe struggling with more than others. But I'm really proud of the fact that you have had your, your standards are so high. I mean, Massachusetts get a lot, gets a lot of air time about their high standards, but I think a little known fact is that Missouri's are right up there and very, very strong. Things that I think is often the dirty little secret of education is that sometimes our very best people are in our least challenging educational settings and vice versa. If you have a PhD, you're, you know, in cream puff high, and if you are brand new, uh, you're in inner city you know, fill in the blank. And um, we need to find ways to get our very best teachers doing the hardest work and reward them for doing it. And, and what are some of the things that we can do to make that more attractive and, and re attract and recruit, retain? Obviously, resources uh, are an issue. I expect that uh, the Congress will appropriate more for No Child Left Behind, uh, as has been done every year. There's about a you know, 54% uh, increase in uh, federal funding since the president took office for Missouri. Um, we, it's kind of a good news, bad news scenario from last year. We had a large cut to the Reading First program, about a 60% cut, which is really going to pinch. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is there's more Title I money. Uh, so, you know, it gives states, I guess, more latitude to figure out, you know, allocating resources around reading and other needs. And um, obviously, I'm well aware that resources are an ongoing issue, not only at the federal level, but clearly in the state legislature and the local school board and every other place. Um, so I'll just stipulate that right up, right off the top. So those are the things that, that I want to visit with you about. Um, you know, this is a time that, that I am willing and want to uh, engage with you all and, and think about the sorts of things I can do between now and the end of my term. And, January of next year to make this law work as well as possible. And that's why I'm here. You're welcome. Great to have you. Uh, we are pleased to have you. I'm pleased that you come through this storm to get here. I didn't realize that's I was impressive. going to have to do that. Well, I'm <laughs> giving you more credit than you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> but thank I appreciate you. Senator Kennedy so much and Chairman Miller. We have had strong bipartisan support for the core principles of this law. And they have been, you know, vigilant supporters of it. And, you know, they call this in Washington the silly season. I mean, this is not necessarily the time for a lot of rationality around policy making. I hope that we will get to a place, and I think the way he sees the potential scenario is that, that the, the primaries will settle out and there will be kind of a, a policy vacuum that will allow kind of cooler heads to prevail and for us to get some work done around these I'm calling them the sweet spot issues that I've talked with you about. We have broad agreement around a lot of these issues. And, um, but obviously there are lots of people who are wanting to, you know, detract from the core principles of the law as well. So I hope so. I'm going to work hard with them to see if we can get it done. That's the perfect world scenario to provide that certainty for another six years. But if we don't, I don't want to, you know, burn through the daylight that I have 
to make law, the law work as well as possible. I think if we don't get it done this year, it is highly unlikely it will get done next year. And then they'll begin a process that will take us well into into the second year of the administration. It seems no child left behind to flexibility and funding. Uh, it sounds like you're ready to concede some flexibility, but still want to get accountability. How do you how do you do that? Sure. I, I think, as I said, you know, we passed the best law we could six years ago when we had about 10 states that had real annual measurement systems that were disaggregated that really, uh, you know, were, were what, I, what I think would be considered high quality under the new law. And it took us until 06, 07 really to get every single state in the country on a, on a system or on a page where we can really provide more flexibility from a policy point of view. One of those things is a growth model idea that we can give credit to our educators and our kids over time for the progress they're making Sorry. so long as we you know pick up the pace obviously as we head into 2014 but uh, there are certainly some things we can do based on what we've learned over the last six years and that's why I, I hope that the Congress will act this year to on a, on a good new law uh, if they don't I obviously intend to use the authorities I have to you know be as smart as we can uh, in the meantime between now and reauthorization respect to resources that's obviously a perennial issue in Washington and here and at the state legislature and local school board um, obviously there's been additional resources for education each and every year that no child left behind has, has been enacted it's up you know 54 percent or something like that since uh, since the law was passed here in Missouri for the federal funds um, and obviously the president has asked for more again and I'm sure the Congress will provide additional resources but I think what I'm here to discuss really is more you know, how do we make the policy work? think that science and math, or not math, excuse me, science, social studies, you know, the arts have been shortchanged a little bit by No Child Left Behind, by local school districts? Well, science is about to be added as part of the, and not for accountability purposes, but uh, th this year science assessments will be uh, tested once at each grade level, so once in elementary school, middle school, and high school. So we'll have more information about, about, that, uh, about that subject. Um, you know, as I said, this is one of the, the kind of the constant discussions we have about where the federal policy fits in and where state and uh, local boards take over. This is a necessary uh, first step, reading and math. Those are the gateway skills and subjects, you know, the, you can't be a superstar in social studies if you can't read, etc. That is not to say that states and boards and others shouldn't be looking at those subjects. Uh, but again, we think a vigorous yet discrete uh, federal roles around these, sub these gateway subjects of reading and math. I don't know, are time being optimistic or pessimistic on whether it be reauthorized? It seemed like there were sometimes you seem to be optimistic and then you... That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I want to get back You know, who knows? I mean, I hope they do. I, I really do. I think a new law that will establish stability and certainty for our states and educators for another six years would be outstanding and I think there's a you know that I hope that my efforts in the states kind of trying to get uh, intel and, and get uh, a bead on what the core issues are is useful to, to get that done however um, it's also possible that it won't get done and you know school chiefs and school superintendents can't afford to wait another three years before anything happens from a policy point of view because they have legitimate uh, uh, observations and we've learned some things and we ought to act on them. 